evening, everyone. Um, Brother Sean asked me to give my testimony tonight because he's not going to be here. And um, my name is Deborah Snipes. For those of you that don't know me, my husband Tom's over there. Um, let me start by saying a prayer first because I know that's what he would do. Lord, we just thank you for loving us and um, providing for us and just caring for us like you do. We thank you for this beautiful day and this time to get together. I just ask that you will help me to encourage and inspire others and that we would all just bring you glory in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so um, in this testimony, what I want you to get, and hopefully you will through all this stuff, is that God knows he is always with us, he provides, and we can trust him. So um, my mom got saved when I was three years old at a Pentecostal church in Nashville in Woodbine. And um, it later became Christ Church, which some of you may know, um, which is a non-denominational church with a Pentecostal back background on Old Hickory Boulevard in Nashville. And um, I was baptized when I was nine years old, accepted Jesus, and um, I um, rededicated my life in 1998 when our second daughter was born and my husband was baptized and our oldest daughter was eight years old. She was baptized and we dedicated our baby who was three or four months old. So, but um, when I was eight years old, I lost my dad. And um, when I was 16, I lost my stepdad. Then when I was 24, I lost another stepdad. And so there was a time in my life where I was like, God, why do you not want me to have a dad? You know, why do you keep taking these men who are fathers? And I felt like he just said, I'm your father. I can give you everything they can give you and more. And so I think that's when my relationship with God changed. And he wasn't just, you know, God, my creator, you know, um, he was my father, you know, a, a closer relationship. And so I began to look at him like I would an earthly father, you know. And so my relationship just got a lot closer and a lot better. And I'm, I'm sure that's just how he works. You know, he does things that we don't understand, but it's always for our good. And that was just his way of drawing me closer to him. And let's see, moving forward, um, in 2017, I lost my mom four days before my birthday. And then two months later, I lost my oldest sister, which was a surprise. And um, in 2012, I had lost another sister. That was a surprise. So, you know, I felt like, you know, Lord, you're taking all these people away from me again. And I was just at a very, I hate to say dark, but at a dark place, you know, just feeling overwhelmed with grief and just, you know, Lord, you forgot about me again. You know, all this stuff is happening to me. Well, then I found out I was going to have a grandson. And then, you know things cheered up a lot. He brings a lot of joy to us. And um, that was in 2018, in March. Then by October 2018, I found out I had multiple myeloma. I was hospitalized for nine days at St. Thomas while they were trying to figure out what was wrong with me. And if you don't know what that is, it's a cancer that sucks the calcium out of your bones and puts it in your bloodstream where it doesn't belong. So your bones get really weak and they're easy to fracture and break. And I did have a fracture in my T11 in my back, didn't know it, but that's why I was having so much pain. Had lesions in my hip, which was causing me a lot of pain. You know, I thought I had just pulled a muscle in my back and I had been going to the chiropractor for over a month. I went to physical therapy for over a month and none of that was helping. My doctor tried to give me pain medicine. That wasn't helping. And um, like I said, I ended up in the hospital, and they figured out what it was. So then I started treatment at Vanderbilt, where I had taken my mom many times for her cancer treatment. She had um, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma off and on for 10 years. I had also taken my mother-in-law 
for a few years when she had um, radiation and chemo for lung cancer. So when I was diagnosed, um, part of me, um, you know, was familiar with cancer and with the hospital and how all that was going to go. So, I, you know, it didn't really frighten me. But at the same time, um, I also had a peace because I had been praying for some family members. And about two years before I was diagnosed, we had done a book Bible study called The Circle Maker with some ladies at church. And um, I had got this idea from the book to march around my house um, six times, like Joshua did around the walls of Jericho, and I would say prayers, you know, for my family members. And so when I was diagnosed, um, I was like, okay, God's just answered my prayer in a weird way because as I was praying, I said, Lord, whatever it takes, you know, to bring them closer to you, you know, if, if it has something to do with me, whatever it takes, you know, I'm, I'm open. And so I just, I had a peace. Of course, my husband was a wreck, you know, in the hospital because um, all my organs were shutting down. You know, basically I was dying and they didn't know why until they figured it out. And one, one doctor out of five figured it out. They were arguing and, um, yeah, that was crazy. But anyway, she did figure it out and I started getting treatment. And then um, there were a lot of ways that God provided through this scary ordeal for us. And uh, it just amazes me when we look back and we talk about how he was always there providing things even before we knew we were going to need them. And um, the first thing he did, well, it probably wasn't the first thing, but one of the big things he did was my husband got a promotion at work. And, you know, because when you... When you're in the hospital for several days, you get a nice big medical bill. And then, of course, when you have to have um, chemo treatments, you get more big medical bills. So that was a strain on our family. But he got a promotion, which helped. And then um, after I had started chemo and stuff, they wanted to do a stem cell transplant, which meant I was going to have to stay at the hospital for four to six weeks. And our insurance only covered it because we lived just three miles further than their cutoff. Had we lived any closer than that three miles, they wouldn't have covered it. But we lived just three. So again, you know, we were just watching the Lord provide and take care of us. And then um, for two weeks after, at least two weeks after we got home from the hospital, I could not do anything for myself. I mean, I, I couldn't get up out of bed by myself. I couldn't walk. I couldn't take a shower, use the bathroom by myself. I mean, there were so many things I couldn't do. I couldn't even feed myself. My husband fed me. And um, before we got home from the hospital, a friend of his who's a physical therapist had sent all this equipment to our house and told my son to put it together. I had a wheelchair. I had a walker, I had a shower chair, a bedside potty chair, a bed rail, all this stuff that we had no idea I would need that I did. We used every bit of it. So, again, that was another godsend, you know, he, he provided. And uh, it just it gives me chills when I think about it. But um, I was in so much pain the first two weeks at least, I don't really know how long it was, I was on morphine every two hours. They had to give me liquid morphine. He had to give me liquid morphine every two hours and then a pill of morphine every four hours. I mean, it was pretty bad. But God brought me through it. I've come a long way. And then uh, another miraculous thing was our, um, she's our third daughter, third youngest. Um, she had gotten her driver's license just a month before I went into the hospital, you know, not knowing any of this was going to happen. And she was 17, so we had put it off. But thankfully, she had her driver's license because while we were at the hospital, she was able to take her and my son, her little brother, um, to their classes. We homeschool, but we do some classes together with other homeschoolers. So she was able to drive them and then go to the store if they needed something. So I just, I look back at that as another way that God provided you know, unbeknowing to us. 
And then we had friends that brought them food while we were at the hospital. Um, and then a friend let them spend the night with her some, you know, so they weren't at our house alone all the time. And just, I don't know, it was just wonderful how he took care of us while we were in the middle of this, you know, storm of chaos. And um, let's see, I wrote notes because there's so much to remember. I was afraid I would leave something out, and I don't want to leave anything out. Um, my friends, when I went to have the stem cell transplant, knowing I was going to be there for a month, um, we stayed at these apartments that are across from Vanderbilt that they have for patients. Um, they gave me two laundry baskets full of stuff. They had pajamas, slippers, um, blankets, magazines, books, movies, snacks, chapstick, lotion, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, and, and that was a, you know, a big blessing, another way that God provided. And then they had cards for every day for me to open that were from each one of them. They made sure I had one for every day. And it just had scriptures and encouragement and stuff. So, you know, that was a blessing. Then they had bought this, um, and y'all probably have one. I don't know what they're called. But the thing that it changes pictures every so often, it's like a little TV almost. Um, they had bought one of those, and they put, um, what is it, a thumb drive? Whatever those things are. It has pictures on it. Pictures from our homeschool group pictures from um, different events where I had been with my friends, and then some of our family pictures that they had gotten, I think, off my Facebook. So I had that running while I was there um, where I could just, you know, even though I was away from everybody and we were kind of quarantined, I couldn't go and, you know, I couldn't go shopping or do anything. So that was nice to be able to see all those pictures of everybody um, while we were shut in in the apartment. And then I had, um, I'm a music lover, I had a playlist for every part of my um, transplant journey because, you know, there were times when you would have um, a stem cell collection, you would have, you know, harsh chemo, I did lose my hair. Um, it, there were just so many different phases of it that I made playlists for every one to encourage me. And it was like three pages long, but um, I condensed it to just a few to give you an idea of what lifted my spirits and kept me going. And you may recognize some of these, and you may not, but hopefully you do. Um, the one that meant the most to me, which is my favorite, is um, I Lift My Life Up by Unspoken. And, of course, again, um, about two years before I was diagnosed, we had a talent show at the church we were going to. And I was not one to do, you know, talent shows or to get up in front of people. This is not my cup of tea. But for some reason, I felt led to do that song. And I didn't sing it. I mean, I did mouth it, but I didn't sing it. I just played it, and I um, did whatever you call those motions to it. And... Um, I thought, man, that that was exactly what I was doing when I was going through all the chemo and stuff. I was like, Lord, you know, I'm yours. I know you'll take care of me through this. You know, I know you've got me. Um, and I wasn't scared at all, no matter what happened. Um, I just felt peace. But I did. I lifted my life up to him. And in the song it says, I give it all in surrender. So I did. I surrendered. And I said, you know, I am yours, whatever you need to do. Um, another one was I Give You Control by 10th Avenue North, which I did. I handed over the reins to him because, you know, there, at that point when you're doing chemo and stuff, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> now, you know, you're at the mercy of the doctors and whatever the Lord has for you. Uh, another one was I Give It All by We Are Messengers. Another one was Give It All by Blanca. I Have This Hope by 10th Avenue North. I give all my cares to you by Citizen Way. I cast my cares on you by finding favor. Everything I've needed, you've always been by unspoken. Even the sparrow knows who holds tomorrow by Jason Gray. Your mercies are new over and over by Chris McClarney. I turn to you, Jesus, by Sela. I press on, building 429. I surrender the outcome by Tim Timmons. 
because, you know, I, I very well could have died. They said when I did that um, hard chemo that it's the closest you'll ever come to death. I don't know that it was, but it was pretty harsh. Um, let's see. He Knows by Jeremy Camp. He does. He knows everything going on with you in your life. Um, all your fears, all your tears, he knows every bit of it more than we do. Um, I Need You, God, by Consumed by Fire. I'm in Over My Head by Jen Johnson, because I was, and Counting Every Blessing by Wren Collective. And as I said, these are just a few. I had several, but these songs just reminded me um, that he was in control. I was not, and I had nothing to fear because he's my father. You know, and he loves me. He loves every one of us and takes care of us. So um, that's, that's my testimony. I tried to stretch it out. Boy, that went fast. <laughs> I tried to make it longer. Um, oh, I'll tell you another thing, another blessing. When we got home from the hospital, a friend of mine who is a nurse came to the house and helped Tom figure out all those medications I had because, you know, I had steroids, I had um, antivirals, um, Lord, what all, there were pain medicines, there were, um, you know, medicines to keep you from having nausea, medicines to help you sleep, there were so many medicines, and he was, you know, already upset, and then for him to have all that stuff to figure out was just chaos for him, but she helped him make this little chart that told what all the medicines were for and when to give them. And um, so that was another blessing for us, um, having her to help him figure all that out. Then it was crazy. Um, we have four kids. We have three daughters and a son. He's 17. He's the only one left at home. The girls are all married now. And um, they they handled it pretty well, too. I don't know if that was because of us trying to be calm, or me trying to be calm, but you know, it, it was, it was, it's still scary. You know, I'm still going through treatments and stuff. I got to go to the doctor tomorrow. But um, again, I know who takes care of me. I know who's in control, and I have nothing to fear um, because I know where I'm going if he takes me. So, and if he leaves me here, which I. I hope he will. I mean, I feel like I could do a lot of stuff. So I'm just praying, Lord, you know, I, I could be more effective for you if you just heal me completely and I don't have to do all this. But I don't know what his plans are. I know that I can trust him, whatever his plans are, um, because he sees way more than I do. And he has so much going on with people, whether it's family, friends, neighbors. He has so much that he's doing that we're um, unaware of, um, so it's just, it's easier to just let him handle it and to just trust him through it all. Um, what else? Have I left anything out? Hmm. That went really fast. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Y'all have any questions? I mean, I'm, I'm praying that all my children will, you know, grow to have a, a close, strong relationship with Jesus, that they won't just view God as the creator and that's it, that they will really get to know Jesus on a personal level um, to where he's their closest friend, you know, their father, somebody that they know they can trust and rely on no matter what no matter what comes, no matter what happens. And I just pray that. I hope that I have been a good example for them. Lord knows I've tried. And I do have one daughter that I would call my prodigal child. She's the oldest. And she's one of them that I was praying for when I was marching around the house, you know, every day, every day that the weather was decent. You know, I was marching around just praying, praying, praying. And um, I still do it. I don't march around the house, but I still pray for her that one day, 
you know, he says, train them up in the way they should go. When they are old, they will not depart from it. So I'm like, okay, Lord, you said that. I'm relying on it. <sighs> but, um, and I do trust him. You know, it may happen when I'm gone. I can't do everything I want to do. Um, like, I can't run. Every time I've tried to run, it, it hurts my bones. So I guess they're still not, and they may not ever get back to normal. Um, they've just been weakened so much. And she said, the doctor said I probably had it for years and didn't know it. That's how myeloma is. It creeps up on you. It just slowly takes the calcium out of your bones until, most people don't know until they fracture or break something. And even then, a lot of times they don't find it. They have to fracture or break several before they figure out, oh, your bone's are really weak and you need some intervention. But um, I can do a lot of things that are pretty normal. And I still have some pains, you know, in my hip um, and my back. It'll get to aching sometimes, but nothing like it was before. So I've really come a long way, and I'm thankful for that. So if I had, well, I was diagnosed in um, 2018 and had the stem cell transplant in March of 2019. And then by the end of 2019, I was in remission. And all of 2020, you know, when we got shut in, couldn't go nowhere, <laughs> I was in remission. You know, I, was, I had gotten off all the medications because I told them I, I didn't want to take anything. And, of course, there was a few times we went to the park. But, um, yeah, I, I was in remission until last year in June. And then they said my, what they call my M spike was starting to go up again. So they put me on immunotherapy, which is what I take now, once a month. I think it started out once a week, then it went to once every two weeks, then once every three weeks, and then once a month. So, and they did try chemo. Uh, they had me try a chemo pill a month ago, and I started getting neuropathy in my legs and feet, and I just quit taking it after a week. I said, no, I don't want to do that. And they said that was fine. Um, and the last time I went to the doctor last month, um, my M spike was undetectable. Now, I don't know if that was God or if that was that one week of chemo, which I doubt. So I'm anxious to see what my blood work shows tomorrow. So, but again, whatever, you know, the Lord has control of it all. And I just, I want him to use me in whatever way he needs to.